All right, thank you. Welcome everybody. Uh, nice to see everyone and welcome to FOIA. Uh, Yay. We do have a few first timers here with us. So thank you for being with us. And we will get started with the exhibition here. Hi, Adiola. Hi. All right. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Great. Hi, everyone. It looks beautiful. This gallery is beautiful. Yes. Especially the dark walls against it. Everything's yeah. Really yeah I wanted something to change. <laughs> we try to use different rooms every time, but. Okay, first we have Alessandro, but I don't think he's with us right now. And he's now back in Italy instead of Germany. Okay. There we go. Eva Nila, do we have her? That's nice. Here. All right. And do we have a uh, Joanna or Joanna? Okay, we'll come back. These are her two pieces here. Hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, next, I know we have Stephen Archer here. Oh, hey, that's me. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this piece, Stephen? Uh, you know, I, I, as with everything I do, I'd love to tell you that there's some sort of grand concept behind it. But honestly, I just start putting images together until they make sense. And uh, this was certainly one of those. Um, it's, I, I did it last summer. Um, and oddly, oddly enough, it hasn't sold yet, which I don't actually mind because it's one of my favorites from that series or from that body of work. Um, uh, it's called All of Us Are Burning. Some of us just don't know it yet. So, and it's, uh, what is it? 24 by 36, I think. Oil and graphite. It's nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's an epic piece. I really enjoy it. the The symbol of house is so much tied to the concept of of uh, like home, the self, and mm -hmm. so it's really profound. I, I use that symbol symbol a lot, and uh, yeah, it's um, definitely definitely house and self and uh, or home, like your it's such a great piece of shorthand which is one of the, the uh which is t what i tend to be drawn to when i'm looking for symbolism um and i've used houses for years as a as a kind of uh identity shorthand i don't think i've asked before either uh do you put the oil down first and then what do you use the graphite for? Does that add tones? Oh, no. Um, I, I do the uh, initial drawing on the canvas in graphite. Um, so first step is drawing, the can drawing it on the canvas with the graphite. Now I'll go over it with um, liquid, which is just a fantastic oil medium. And I use that to, to liquefy the graphite and essentially turn it into paint. Um, so by the time I'm done with that stage, I, I more or less have a grayscale painting of, of what the final piece will be, even if it doesn't necessarily have all the detail in it. Uh, and then do the oil or do the color on top of that. But the cool thing with the graphite is that you can then take that and go back in and, and bring out fine detail with it. Uh, it's also a good way of like really uh, um, just spot toning areas very quickly. I also use it as a, as a um, way of doing visual notes on the painting. So like if I'm working on something, I know I want to come back 
and uh, and do a specific thing to an area, I will often just sketch that in real quick with the graphite and it won't stay there. But um, that way I know that when I get back to it, I won't have forgotten whatever the idea is. Oh, I like that. And you know, yeah. you, you can use just any, I mean, you can just use, uh, I, I use graphite sticks, but um, you know, if you want, you can always go in and just use the, uh, just use mechanical pencils, things like that. And that's another great way of adding lots of little fine detail very quickly. Excellent. I love that. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, thank you. Hey, I, I have a question. Go for it. Yeah, have you ever considered uh, the translation of this 2D idea into uh, 3D, like sculpture, or or even how it would translate to other art forms like a yes. video or something like that? Oh, uh, yes. Hold on. Let's go. Ah. Aha. By the way. <laughs> Funny you should ask. <laughs> so this is a sculpture I made a bunch of years back on a turtle shell. Oh. Um, oh I yeah. like that. That's great. Cool. But also, yeah, we're in exactly the right room for this. Um, this is, I don't know how well you can see it, but this is a, uh, hold on, just the lighting. <clears throat> I don't know if that made it better or worse. <laughs> so, um, skull built, well, uh, I was yeah. fascinated by the idea of the mechanical hound from uh, Fahrenheit 451. So Ooh. I was trying to build a representation of that. Um, also, this mask. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which I've been. Uh, I love. <laughs> this is actually for I. I have um, several music projects, and this is for uh, for one of those. And the last one, since we like, Crazy. I just want to show you something else that I'm very excited about. This is also for the live show. So this is another mask for it, but. Uh, now you have to picture this on a very dark stage with spotlights. Oh, the dragon. Oh, wow. Ah. Oh, wow. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> oh, that'll be amazing with the lights hitting off of it. Yeah, well, it's for one specific song. And uh, during the transition, you all have the stage go dark with just a pair of spotlights on, the, on it and pull that off. So, so yeah, I um I don't do a ton of sculpture, but uh, but I do really enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly because there's just not a. Uh, it's easier to sell paintings. Yeah. Um, so in time investment versus return. Um, and so a lot of the sculptural stuff I make it tends to have to be, uh, you know, practical for some reason, like. This guy was for a, a music video that I did last year. So. Mm -hmm. cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. No, thanks for asking. Thank you, Stephen. All right. Next up, I believe we have uh, Murray Nasimov here. Yeah, nine. Okay, this is her piece, Eros. Uh, next up, I know we've got Paul O'Farrell. Thank you. Hello, you all right? Uh, so this is a piece I've got behind me actually. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. fabulous. So I trained in costume many, well, many years ago. 
and our memories beforehand, everybody said I said to try and merge the two together. So when I started doing paintings, I was like, yeah, that's great, but what about your 20 odd years in costume? Can you bring that in? So we did a show called The Meister Singer in the Opera House. And this guy had made these molds of, I think it was an Izumiyaki corset. And so I just took one home, made a mold of it, and I've just tried doing all sorts of different paintings of it. And this is Hestia's flame. Obviously, Hestia is the Greek goddess of fire, or the half. And so, yeah, that's her, really. I've done a whole series of them, different colours, different shapes. They're very sculptural. They can be worn, of course. <laughs> That's what be the point of making it. <laughs> but, yeah, there she is. All right. That's yeah, cool. yeah, on it. There's lots of diamond crystals and things on it, and glitters. And... Hmm. What's it made wow. of? What? Yeah, what is the catch of it? Nice. Not to monopolize or anything, but really quick, I didn't make this, but you might find it interesting. This was a a, a, a metal bustier sculpture oh, at okay. the art gallery uh, that yeah. created a piece for. But yeah, it, it just reminded me of that piece that you were showing. Yeah, it's pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think we heard you, Paul, when someone asked what, what it was made out of. It's mod rock, oh. plaster bandages. Yeah. I put it onto the cast, then I tried to make them just as well. Oh. I put okay. felt and velvet ribbon around the inside, and there's some oh, ribs. Put the, the lacing through. You can't oh. put it too tight, it's, it'll probably snap. Yeah, did I've had people wear them all the evening for events and for doing a live show and stuff. Mm. Did you say it was yeah. wearable? Sorry, wearable, yeah. Wear yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you. Great. All right, and our next step, do we have Ariel here? I don't know if I saw him. Okay, does not look like we do. All right, this is his piece, Red Sunset. We kind of chose two different ones for this. And then this one, wow. Peace and Bloody War. Wow. Mm. Our next up, another first timer that we have, and I believe she's here, uh, Valia. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hello. 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 So actually, my artwork uh, names the floating station, and uh, it's devoted to, uh, you know, the global woman niche here. Uh, so I think uh, some days uh, maybe we uh, colonize Mars and leave our planet. So it, it's about burning planet, just burning issue. And it's made uh, uh, with uh, media mix technique because uh, I use acrylic for face of the girl. Uh, I use some collage technique and uh, uh, actually it's a video piece uh, because it's animated GIF and it looks like um, tiny little orange pieces is uh, coming through this uh, mouth that uh, you can uh, notice uh, on the piece of the newspaper. And I believe you said it's an environmental statement too, right? Uh, right, somehow. But um, actually, I'm trying to emphasize uh, the digital ethics uh, issue, and it's more or less uh, close to the environmental in question. Do we have any questions from anyone or? That's digital, correct? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. When I can't remember when you submitted, is it part of a video too? Uh, yes, I've sent you the video part as well, but uh... I'll try, if I will find it in uh, my uh, smartphone, I will uh, send you a link. 
Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, did we have another question? I'm sorry. Good night. Our next person up, um, Betsy Berlin. We have Betsy here. Okay. This is one's uh, Foya in Potsdam. Our next, Debar Pita, I believe we have you, yes? Debar Pita Sarka? No? Is there okay. any size information on that, Eugene? Any what? Size information? On this one? Yeah, or materials. I, I, I'm curious if it's a... Uh... If that's a physical object or if it's a just um, a digital image that she took, but it is a physical. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like a relief of yeah. sorts. But I don't yeah. have um, dimensions of the actual object, but I can ask for you. I, I, it's okay. I just was just was just curious because it's very nice. All right, our next Mark John work. We have Mark. All right, doesn't look like we have him, but these are his Hello Wait series. There's two different ones. And our next person up, we have Karen Hoffman. We have Karen, okay. Does not look like we do. All right, this one's Inner Glow. Our next person, Mufusa Raman. Hello. Um, so this painting is a it's oil on canvas. It's um, it's small. It's eleven by fourteen inches, and it's uh, it's allegorical. Uh, it's about pain, betrayal, the underworld, and maybe better times to come. I know we have two pieces from you, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I think, uh, I think the other one is on. It's in the in the next room. Yes. I'm actually, finding that. Um, here we go. And this is the second piece we have. Yeah. Uh, so this is oil on wood. It's uh, 19, 19 and a half by twenty four inches, I believe. And um, so I, I painted this and I wasn't sure what it meant until a friend of mine like sent me this article about grief. And in the article, they cited the definition of grief to be all the love that you have and want to give, but you can't give. Um, and like after I read that article, I knew what the piece was about. And I, so this one's called Grief. Now I can relate to that too, because I, I'll start a painting often and not know the name or what the meaning is until we get to the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Is this during the pandemic? Uh, no, it was actually like a few months before it. Hmm. It's nice. I like this uh, the bottom of her back, you know, just really ghosty. Looks good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's very nice. I like the uh, looking, that sense of the black in front of her. You know, really uh, speak volume. It kind of shows uh, the grieving process, the like the dark and the light, and it, it makes you kind of ponder what she's thinking of. Very nice. It looks like a warrior of some sort. Yes. that in it too. Thank you, Mafuza. And this is your first time with us, right? Yes. Well, thank you for joining us. We're happy to have thank you. you. Thank you. 
All right, our next step now, Emily Elisa Halpern. We have Emily. Hi, yes, I'm here. I'm so sorry, it says Silver Bullet One. I, I don't know how I got that title on my name there, but I'm Emily and this is my piece. It's called Paradise Lost. It's actually a really big painting. It's 76 inches or six foot four by six foot four, which is my height. So I'm inviting the viewer sort of into, it's like a self portrait, but in you know, my mind. And so um, this is based on the town of Paradise, which mm. if anyone lives in California, that burned yeah. down to the ground. But it also relates to the John Milton poem, Paradise Lost, about the devil who wakes up in a sea of boiling lava. And of course, um, like many of my paintings, it's uh, kind of open-ended and ambiguous, but what I try to do is, um, you know, in invite the viewer to make up his or her own narrative. And in this piece, um, I mean, how can you not think of, I, well, I think of global warming and the, when, especially in California, when there were just those fires that were just relentless and the, the hills were just glowing. And so this is um, oil paint on linen. Amazing, beautiful. Very nice. Yeah, it's great. Right. It really puts the viewer into the, the position of subject, you know, because you're like looking into this space, being a part of the space. And it's like a window into this uh, purgatory, if you will. Yeah, I you can't love, really... I, Yeah, I love your pieces. I love the size and everything that you exercise. It's very ambitious and very atmospheric. And I also really enjoy your recipes, by the way, just as a side note. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the the, te the texture on this is really thick too. You can't really yeah. tell on the photo, but yeah. there's like the, the surface quality is um, very thick and gritty and like charred wood, like it sticks out from the painting a lot. Do you ever try using any kind of medium like uh, dust or dirt into the paint? You know, uh, in the part of, of LA that I, that, that I live in, you'd think that I would, but um, I haven't yet, but Anselm Kiefer, who is an artist that I like very much, he like incorporates a lot of stuff like that, but I haven't tried that with, um, liquor, with oil paint. Liquor oil. Uh, this is oil. Okay. Um, something that I did years and years ago that was pretty cool on, on board, if you make um, a bunch of just liquid plaster and just drip it down the board, you can get some really cool effects. Um, mm -hmm. If it were acrylic, I would say look into uh, uh, Golden makes this heavy body gel that's mm -hmm. just fantastic for, for uh, building up surface. Yeah, these are just do. created. I, I never know what I'm going to paint beforehand. And so it's yeah, just yeah. a discovery. So I, I, it's hard for me to plan what it's going to be. Yeah, but that, that sounds like it takes planning and process. Yeah, yeah. But thank you. Well, thank you, Emily, and uh, we're happy to have you. All right, our next one up, Adiola, Phoenix Rising. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, so uh, this piece uh, came about, I really didn't have uh, anything in mind when I started the piece, uh, other than I was, um, the piece was started for a call that has to do with red. Uh, and being intuitive, uh, it kind of developed and, and evolved as I worked on it. And uh, the image started to appear and I just kind of Go with the flow of what was uh, popping up and showing up on the canvas and kept developing that uh, and uh, at the end I was debating should I leave it or should I wipe it and I says you know that's part of what's being intuitive uh, painter is to react to what's on there and not necessarily maybe a perceived uh, idea of something in mind uh, prior to starting <laughs> Uh, the work. So this is an acrylic on canvas uh, with uh, mixed media. 
Uh, it's got a lot of texture in it. Uh, that was built up and um, uh, it's 36 by 36. And, uh, and when I look back, I'm, I'm thinking more that probably subconsciously, I was probably influenced with a lot of the things because this was done around the time that we had a lot of fires and all that things going on. And maybe that's why it kind of um, show itself. Uh, you know, it, it, I might not have been thinking about it when I started it, but when uh, I, and I did it outside, outside of the studio because I used combinations of acrylic spray and acrylic paint. And when I do the spraying, I usually do it outside so that the concentration is not. So maybe the smell of the the, uh, the burning uh, um, in the area, because uh, we have around me where there's always fire here and fire there. And when you go outside, it's like, okay, which, which part of the hill is burning today? And that kind of thing. So uh, yeah. I'm subconsciously thinking that that has a lot of is, and also came about with the title of the Phoenix Rising because of the image that uh, revealed itself. So that's pretty much on this piece, you know, it wasn't something where I says, you know, I wanted to do uh, the Phoenix Rising and stuff like that. It was just started something. And this uh, color palette is not usually my typical uh, color palette, uh, but it's what it involves. At the end, I almost wanted to kind of erase everything. And and then I said, no, I need to sit on it for a while and see. And I kept it. And, and and then when the call came out for this, I was looking and said, oh, I think this, you know, it's a perfect piece to put in along with a few other ones. And, and you guys selected this one for the exhibition. I really like the, the different sort of reds, like anybody who's worked with the red a lot knows like just how much they range from the brown red to the bright to like the sort of dusty rose. And it can mm. be hard to like, sometimes you go too far into the purple and the peach, but you just like nail the. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was, like I said, it wasn't my regular uh, normal palette, and usually on the more, uh, a lot of colors and things like that. And with this one, it's pretty much limited uh, to using red and having to explore uh, a lot of the different shades of red and applying and, and uh, get it to work out with the uh, image that's in there. Um, it was challenging, but it was also fun at the same time. No, I'm glad you decided to keep it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that's always that's a hard decision though, but. <laughs> what was that? I said, it's always a hard decision though, because uh, whether to wipe it or keep it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. And uh, uh, it, it's actually get a lot of comments and a lot of uh, exposures since I've been, I started sharing it because I didn't share it really when I first did it and stuff like that. So it was like, you know, not mine, but uh, usual color and things like that totally, you know, looks different from my uh, normal uh, style of work. But like I said, uh, I, I, sat, I sat on it and put it away behind another canvas until I looked at it when the call came out, so. And it's called Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah. Phoenix Rising. I like it. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Adiola. Thank you. All right, our next person up, Bruce Sanders. Do we have Bruce with us? I'm here, Eugene. Hi. Hi, hi everybody. This is uh, first time for me. So let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Bruce. Uh, I'm a uh, expressionist painter. I live in uh, Malibu, uh, California. I'm a colleague of Eugene at uh, TAG Gallery. Uh, I'm very excited to be part of this uh, international uh, virtual uh, exhibition. Um, the first piece is uh, called Genesis. It's 48 by 36. Um, and it's my interpretation of uh, the beginning uh, as described in Genesis uh, in the Bible. Um, my work comes from looking inward rather than trying to record the external world. Uh, it's a humble attempt to 
express my feelings, uh, my life experiences, some of the challenges of my life. And uh, one of the things that had an impact on me are uh, boyhood uh, memories of stories of the Bible. Whether you believe in them or not, they've certainly been um, common compositions for artists throughout the ages. So um, I tried to use bold color um, and uh, heavy texture uh, and uh, pretty explosive line and form to describe what I'm feeling inside. And we've all talked about texture. Uh, I use acrylics and uh, what I use also is texture additives. I've used uh, heavy gel um, uh, pumice, pumice gel that the golden brand uh, has, and I mix it with the acrylic to get uh, the texture I'm looking for. And uh, like others uh, who have described uh, before, I, I really don't know where I'm going. I don't really have a plan uh, for my art. A lot of it comes from uh, visions and dreams. I paint a lot at night. Um, and this sort of is my expression of what happened with the beginning of the universe uh, described in that Greek word for uh, the first uh, chapter in the Bible, Genesis. So that that's basically it. And the next one is 30 by 24. It's called the burning bush that presented itself in Exodus to Moses. Uh, and again, um, I use uh, heavily textured materials. I love the golden brand, uh, gold and copper and bronze. Um, they're, they're fantastic for me. They're very expensive, but they're worthwhile. Uh, and I tried to find two pieces that fit you know, the theme of this show. So very excited to be here with my colleagues throughout the world and look forward to seeing more of your work as well. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the, the surface work, but also I really, the, the liveliness of your palette uh, with using the acrylic hat, they're almost like uh, plastic colors. It reminds me of the color palette of maybe a comic book, especially that blue there with Superman and the yellow, and which just adds the whole shifting of the color and the dynamics of the movement at the same time. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm, I'm not a subtle painter. I'm a very physical yeah. painter. Half the time I get it, you know, on me, on the floor, on the walls. And, yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm an all-in person, and uh, I've been around a long time, so I've had a lot of experiences in life, and I try to interpret uh, my feelings uh, cool. on canvas. Some days the magic works, some days it doesn't. Right. Thank you. Awesome. I think that's, we, we, we can all relate to that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. You're welcome. And we're glad to have you. Thank you. Honored to be here with you guys. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, and next one up is uh, Karen Hochman Brown. She's actually not with us, but she left me uh, a little story behind the piece. Uh, today is uh, her solo gallery uh, launch at Tag Gallery. So, uh, yeah, uh, Sunset in Tel Aviv with orchids. She used her manipulated photo collage work as sort of a travelogue and trip down memory lane for this piece. It features a sunset over the Mediterranean and her final day of Tel Aviv. She'd been there for two weeks traveling with a group from their Pasadena synagogue and her mom who lived in Santa Barbara. Uh, she said the sunset was a fitting send off. The orchids also have a connection with her mother uh, with the photograph taken at the annual Santa Barbara Orchid Show of the same year, an event she attended with her mom. And she said in manipulating the sunset image, she felt that something with a green tint would accent the fiery orange and the green cymbidiums fit the bill. Uh, she likes how the lower portion of the artwork looks like a uh, firefall pouring out from brilliant clouds, which I like that part of it too. And the structure at the top reminds her of a laurel of a wreath of victory. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now I can see the Cymbidians. <laughs> that was a piece I really like, and uh, we wish uh, Karen a good opening day today. All right, our next one up, we have Giovanni Ortega. Hi, everyone. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Um, so I made uh, this piece last year around the same time. Um, and as I'm moving like along my artistic and personal journey and finding myself coming to a lot of the same conclusions as my queer ancestors um, and a lot of artists in particular. Um, and I just had an idea of how um, the, this information of like queer people existing and contributing to society has always been hidden um, and it's like up to queer people to discover it uh, if we choose but I just had this idea of us as like flames um, and if we're on like this, this surface like almost separated by time um, and how our ideas sort of reach through generations um, and that's the sort of idea that I had about flames and this sort of sun figure being, or this like top section, this like U sort of shape, um, I think is sort of like a fish tank, like the fish tank of a sky or something. Mm. But yeah, I'm still like on that process of like discovering queer ideologies and um, just that's sort of the path that I'm on as an artist is to sort of that to see what I can contribute and pass on to the next generation, hopefully. Or even also kind of looking at it has a feeling like you're stuck underground and you're staring up at the sky. It looks like a yeah. well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's like, what it remind me of. Like looking for air and looking to escape, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. I love that. Just the yeah, you know, the lines around around the well or the the pit or whatever, they're great, beautiful. The skies are nice too, with the flames, right? Mm -hmm. It's a nice uh, juxtaposition of something hard edged, which are those how you created those flames to the really organic subtlety of the purple to the yellow, you know, the atmospheric part of the sky and within the internal part shapes of the flames are really nice. A good combination with balance. It's beautiful. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you. All right, our next one that we have up is uh, Camelita. Oh. Okay. I think I'm on mute right now. Hi, how are you? Good. So, um, <laughs> so um, anyway, this is a small piece. This is 12 by 12. I don't plan my paintings at all. I finger paint. So this is uh, purely intuitive and finger painted. What happened was the song by uh, Semel, uh, Where's My Love, uh, came on the radio. And I love that song. So it's about some woman disappear and, you know, he's singing for her to come home essentially that. So I did the black background and then I put um, the red, you know, um, and that's why the title is Just Come Home. Um, there's nothing deep about it really, in all honesty. I'm not a deep uh, artist. I'm just a very playful artist. I like to play a lot. And uh, I added some glitter on the painting, um, essentially saying, just come home. I'm here, man. You know, just come home, you know. Um, that's it, you know. Thank you for including me. Thank you. Oh, we're happy to have you. And I love the depth of this piece too. I didn't know that was glitter, but now I can see it on the top. Yeah, I put black, um, I, uh, the background black and uh, silver, a little bit of bronze, as you can see. And then I added uh, the red. Um, I think it was like deep red and also crimson a little bit. 
So I mix it up. Like I said, I think I paint. Um, I can't remember what I did, but I, all I know, I remember I put the glitter. It was really cool. I really like it a lot. It's really nice, I think, in my humble opinion, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. The glitter really adds to it, too, I think, with that yeah. shimmering. Kamalita, yeah. this is Bruce. Uh, hi. You, hi. Uh, love your piece. Um, Thank you. Do you listen to music frequently when you're painting? Um, yes and no. So it depends on my mood, really. I love music, period. I play music at work whenever, and I dance a lot. I'm a dancer. I love, love dancing. But anyway, um, sometimes, you know, sometimes I have the TV on. My children watch some stupid Japanese anime crap, and I listen to it, <laughs> and I, I paint based, you know, and I paint based on my feelings. Sometimes um, I mostly, honestly speaking, I mostly paint based on food because I'm always hungry. I, I'm always <laughs> thinking about fried chicken or tacos. And it's, you know, so my feelings is about hunger. My hunger particularly is always transported onto my painting. The colors <laughs> that I choose, you know. Um, so you can tell, you know, I mean, you can tell what I'm feeling at that time based on the colors that I choose because I'm always hungry. You can see pictures of the salad, the pictures of the tacos, <laughs> the pictures of the fried chicken, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> or sometimes when I come home from work, when I've had a bad day with my boss, and you can also see what I have painted about him as well. <laughs> uh oh. I don't know if anybody else uh, listens to music. I, I do a lot and while I'm painting, and I find that it gives me a very uh, unique energy to, of course. you know, it really helps me and helps me frame my moods. And uh, I, I really do, you know, love having That's music. Important. Something. I know music gets you going, isn't it? And it depends on the music too. But, you know, the metal music gives me a different color. The, you know, 80s gives me a different color. Uh, the 50s swing, you know, 50s, 60s, give me a different color. I know, I know exactly how you feel. No, I do the same thing. I actually plan a little, like, semi-soundtrack for when I'm painting, too. <laughs> to, um, it's, it's always helpful to have it there. That's cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. All right. Next, uh, do we have voice flow? I don't know if I saw him here, uh, but these are his shooting star collage pieces. Cool. No, I wow. especially the color in them. Hmm. And then Fresh. after David Isaacson, is David still with us or did he have, let's see. I'm here, I'm here, Eugene. Yes, thank you for including me. Like a few others, this is the first time I've exhibited with Kunsthaus Rossi. I'm very excited about it. Um, this is a piece that I made um, right after the uh, Wolsey fire here in California. Um, I actually bought the, you'll see there's a red, uh, something lit up with a red LED, LED, LED uh, uh, flat LED light. Uh, that's uh, actually uh, one of those signs that you see in an industrial uh, setting or in, a, uh, in, in an office building where it'll say a fire extinguisher and it'll point to where the fire extinguisher is. is. You can't really see it on the, 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 uh, the sign, but it is there. Uh, and uh, the rest is uh, found objects. I, I actually uh, had bought the, um, the fire extinguisher sign when I was evacuated. I went up to Pine Flat, which is about... Uh, five hours from where I live in Oak Park, California. And um, I, bought the, uh, I bought the sign when I was there waiting to come home. I wasn't sure if my studio was even gonna be there. It turned out that the flames came within 50 yards of my house. So I could walk up oh, the hill hey. from my studio and it's all burnt. Uh, so it was, oh, quite, uh, it was quite profound for me. And uh, I, I just chose the objects that I chose to, uh, to accentuate that experience. I work a lot, I work pretty much solely with with uh, found objects. Yeah. It's an accordion and adding machine and uh, the sign that I told about the symbol. Yeah. 
Does it have some light that's lighting it, it up? It does, Emily. Yeah, the, the, right, right there. That area that Eugene is highlighting, that's actually oh, yeah. lit up. Okay, that's lit yeah. Up from behind. So if you, I said two pictures. When you see uh, the, when you see the piece with the light off, you can clearly see the icon of the fire extinguisher and the text which says fire extinguisher. Mm. Oh, and having that backstory too makes it all the more. Yeah, I, I just I, I knew it was the right piece for the show. I, I, it's pretty much the only piece that I had made that really fit with the theme of foyer. Uh, yeah, so so it was. Uh, I'm glad you picked it out. I, I look forward to working with you guys again. It's such a pleasure to see such an international crowd of uh, exhibitors, and uh, everything has been very uh, profound and interesting. So thank you. Ah, thank you. We're happy to have you with us. All right, our next hey. uh, Edward. I know we have Edward here. Hello, everybody. Um, some of you may be familiar with uh, some of the work I've had in the yes. gallery space before, which is based on underground atomic tests. This is before that work, where it's atmospheric tests, obviously. Um, that's a particular one that's actually based on the photograph I just found here. Pustatonic, Dominic. It's based on a nuclear test that was about in the 10 megaton range, which is enormous. But I'm, I was drawn at the time just to the intrinsic beauty, you know, uh, the physics of it. And this particular piece is shaped. The black is not part of it. That's background. Um, it's acrylic on foam board. And then the outer layer is wood for stability. I, I think it's in like the 36 inch range, something like that. And so each layer of foam board is a different color. And I quit using that because it was just a bitch to cut. So <clears throat> we went to something else. But anyhow, this is about as much fire as you're going to ever want. So that's why I picked it for the, for the exhibition. <laughs> anyhow, that's it's just more of my atomic imagery. Ooh. Thank you. I didn't realize it was like each one's a different. Yeah, yeah it, it's 3D, so three dimensional, but a wall, a three dimensional wall piece, basically. Oh. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Each, I, I, each I color on there is a separate layer of foam board that's been added oh, on. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. I had to zoom in to see the layer. Wow. It's so. Yeah, I didn't see that, but now I do. It has this topographical quality to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to work nice. when I was in college. I worked at, a, at an oil company with the map making. So the topo oh. topographical map stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm dry, I've, I've been drawn to that, using that style of look and a lot of work over the years. Is that similar to the other stuff? I've seen your other stuff. Are they layered like this as well? This is older than those square pieces, which are more kaleidoscopic. Oh, okay. But after I ran the course of all these atmospheric tests of different things, I was looking around for the same subject matter, but different imagery. And since you can get all the longitude latitude for the underground stuff, I started using the satellite imagery for that. So that's all newer work. This is a little bit older. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Edward. Mm -hmm. And a oh, next nice. person up. Uh, I know Debbie was attending a course. Uh, she was going to join us if she was able to, but it doesn't look like she's here. But I love her sculptural pieces. And this is Dreaming, the front of it and the back. Oh, gorgeous. Wow. Wow. I love. This is uh, uh, one of my favorite pieces of hers too. And so I'm glad we got to show it this time. Wow, that's crazy. All right, our next up after is Tim Weedland. Do we have Tim with us? 
Trying to see here, does not look like that we do. Uh, this one's Fire Dancer and Inferno. Next up after Jason Jen, I don't believe we have him with us, uh, but these are his collages. This one is uh, Devil Worth Making Peace With. Uh, Devil 45. This is fun. And then this one is Baptism by Boofing, <laughs> which I had to look up. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is boofing, anyways, by the way? Uh, basically putting drugs up your butt. <laughs> oh, ouch, ouch. What? So it's uh, Baptism by Boofing, is this piece. So it makes it all the more interesting with that. And painful. Yeah, <laughs> use lots of blue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next, Edward. Uh, oh, wait, not Edward. Sorry, uh, Eric Sanders. Do we have Eric? He joins us sometimes. Doesn't look like we do. Uh, this one's Carbon and Inferno. Yeah. Oh, wow. And this one, oh. I like. It's uh, Leo played the sax while Rome burned. And then next up, I we have uh, Larry Cavini. And I yeah. know I'm here. Yeah, and I always enjoy these curated ideas, you guys. You do great. Uh, okay, so th this piece is, you know, fire in itself is a focal point for me because I've had a lot of different experiences with fire and usually wow. it represents loss. Uh, this one, back in the day when I was, I guess I was about, seven years old and very poor and I was always mystified by the idea of going to a, a drive-in movie you know uh, taking a film outside the house or the tv and watch it in your car but we're never able to do it until one evening my stepdad said well we can have a drive-in and he literally moved the tv outside with the antenna and the sofa and set up the antenna and uh had his beer and made bologna sandwiches. And <laughs> we sat there and watched baseball and you know, a bunch of other stuff, you know. And uh, But I've got a poem I like to read that goes along with this. It's the second time I've read a poem out loud. I usually just write them. Okay. As a boy, my dad would take TV, sofa, antenna, beer, bologna sandwiches to the backyard. Baseball, honeymooners, Dean Martin, he would laugh, cuss, drink too. He looked like a king to this young boy. One night, Orlando, my dad, fell asleep and set himself on fire as Rome burns. So, yeah, I went to bed later on and, he, you know, he's been smoking and drinking some vodka too, I guess, and literally accidentally set himself on fire and my mother was screaming and everything. And I went outside and you know, he didn't, you know, he suffered some burns, but uh, the sofa caught fire too. So it's just a memory. This is sublime, Larry. I just love you, the, the handling of your paint. And Thank you. The, yeah, and, and this, your use of black too, it isn't an easy thing to do, but it oh, yeah. really, really makes that yellow there pop like and and not the yellow of the fire but also that kind of like mustardy old couch green yeah. yellow too that's like a difficult color it's got like that lemon yellow that's just like dirty it has that like dirty smoky feel to it and like kudos to you i just appreciate your work so much and and the stories behind it too and, and great poem by the way Oh, thanks. I, you know, that's the second time I've read a poem, so I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, the, uh, 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 trying to remember, surface the memory of what that couch looks like, you know, and it was, you know, the, the couch had the arms were this rolling, roll yeah. arm yeah. to it, you know, and it dates to that period, too, and the fringe at the bottom, too. I remember it being that. Yeah, way, yeah. So. And the flap. Uh, yeah, flap. All right. Wow. Excellent. Thank you, Larry. 
Thank you. All right, our next up, Michael Palladino. I believe we do have Michael here with us. Hey, hello. And these are both encaustic, right? Yeah, these are, are photographs uh, with encaustic. Um, I don't know, I guess back in the day, maybe the 90s, going from the dark room to digital, you know, everybody started just photographing everything. And, and then I guess in the 90s, kind of rich people were able to, you know, do amazing giant digital prints um, that seemed to be everywhere. And so I just figured um, all my photography is kind of, it's photographs, but it, they're kind of creative photographs. So these all came from, um, these are smoke bombs that were lit off and fish oh. and so um you know i had a couple of my friends you know with with sheets and i went to walmart and i got the fish tanks and we lit up smoke bombs and shine flashlights into them and then um you know so they're pretty straightforward i did a bunch of them and then um you know so and again it's kind of with the same thing like going on in california there you know the is the fire destructive or is it kind of you know is it is it is it ethereal? Is it is it you know toxic? Um, but um, so yeah, and then and I guess the wax is just because I'm a really bad painter, and it just <laughs> just kind of um, you know diffuses it a little more and uh, makes it a little softer. Great process, awesome. Thank you. Cool outcome. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, guys. Good to meet everybody. Yeah, I didn't get that these were smoke bo oops, smoke bombs before, but now now I can totally see it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very, very much. nice. Thank you. All right. Next up. All right, we're at the end. Uh, let me stop recording here.